Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on Amanda's car. We are doing the front brakes, we're doing changing the rotors and the pads. This is something that honestly I probably wouldn't have done a video on, but then I got to thinking you may be sitting at home during quarantine or you know having to go to work it back and need to do this yourself without going to a shop or anything like that. So we are going to be going and doing a step-by-step -step process of changing the rotors, the brake pads, and all of that and what's included. So stay tuned for a step-by-step -step process. So to change the rotors and the pads on the front of this car, you will need a couple tools. You need a way to get the wheel off uh, by way of the lug nuts. So either that is a air impact, electric impact, uh, a four-way, or even out of your trunk, a spare tire holder area, the tire iron that is from there. So once you get that off, You'll have two bolts on both the caliper and the caliper bracket here. So you'll need either a wrench or a socket that fits both of those. Generally, they're not the same size. And you will need, if you're going with the socket, then you'll need a ratchet. Um, if you go with wrenches, then just wrenches. And uh, you will need a C-clamp, which will be able to compress down the caliper if you're doing new pads uh, which in most cases you'll need to compress it back down that way you can fit the bigger pads or bigger rotor whatever you're deciding to do uh, over here we have the rotor so this is what the new rotor looks like and we have the pads here and then a uh, the brackets for the pads the hardware kit that goes those will be in here these are the old ones um, so it's good to change those out to the new ones and if you have all that then it's a very simple process if you just follow along you should be able to tailor this video to your needs we have the car up on a lift if you're obviously doing this in your driveway you could just jack it up make sure to use a jack stand uh, that way it doesn't fall on you so we're going to get the wheel taken off of course use a lug nut you loosen them up either with a four-way we're going to be using a air impact so we'll get the wheel off and then we'll show you the next step Now that the wheel is off, this right here that you can see is the brake rotor. So we're going to be replacing the rotor and then we are going to be replacing the brake pads which are in the caliper. This is going to be your caliper and then your caliper bracket here. So we are going to be taking off the caliper, the caliper bracket, and that will let us get to the brake rotor which will be coming off and it's loose here. It's typically held down with the wheel. It may have a uh, two screws or one screw in here to keep the rotor on and, and centered but in this case just the wheel alone holds the brake rotor to the hub. So you want to turn the wheel and then uh, we'll get you a closer view of the bolts back here. You're going to have two bolts for the caliper here and here and then you're going to have two bolts for the caliper bracket which you'll get after you do these two. So here are those two bolts for the caliper. This is your caliper here. We're just going to loosen these up. It's threaded into these spring retainers here that should be locked in with this tab on your caliper. If not, then just kind of wiggle it, make sure it's back in there and you can be able to unscrew it. So there's two of these at the top and bottom here. You can use a wrench or this is a ratchet with a socket on it. Um, if you can't fit the ratchet and socket, then you can definitely use a wrench. So we have those out now. So what you're going to do is pull out your caliper. So here is the caliper. You got your brake pads here. Your rotor is in the middle. 
and uh, in this case there is a caliper bracket for the line we're going to just be hooking this here uh, so we shouldn't be needing to take that off I have just a piece of aluminum welding rod that's bent for a hook if you're doing it at home you can use coat hanger wire shoelace anything that you can use to hang it you just don't want to put stress on this brake line here so hook it in the hole and then uh, you can hook it somewhere in here in our case right there it's actually going to be in the way so you kind of just bend it and uh, make it work for your vehicle in our case it's going to be fine there none of this is really strained and the weight's being held by there so we're going to move to our two caliper brackets uh, bolts which are this one and this one you can just follow the caliper bracket down it's generally going to be the only two bolts left in this area and we'll, before we do that we'll take our shoes I mean our pads out which these just slide straight out the side there and uh, these retainers come out as well pull down when you get uh, your brake pads off and these little retainers keep these around um, depending on which kind of pads you go with it should come with hardware that go with the pads if not you're going to need to clean these up and reuse them here are the caliper bolts talked about previously caliper bracket bolts you're going to get these off there's going to be two of these and your caliper bracket is off. Now that we have the caliper and the caliper bracket off, we are ready to get the rotor off. Uh, mine is just held on like the wheel. Like I said previously, you may have a screw here that is flush that is generally a Phillips that you'll need to take out to get your rotor off from the hub. But mine is coming off. Before I do that, I am going to leave it on with replacement parts rotors this car actually has two different sizes depending on the trim level of the vehicle and the engine size so I'm gonna go ahead and put my new rotor up to it and make sure that it is the right size you always want to do this with replacement parts that way you don't get down the road and your brakes aren't working or they're not grabbing and they wear out and just the wrong part in general here is our new rotor I'm going to put it on the studs like this and just go around visually it is the right size so everything looks good there same bents everything so we can go ahead and pull this off and uh, these rotors have oil on them that's why this isn't rusted I've actually had these for about a month so we're gonna put it on backwards wipe it down with some brake cleaner on the surface where the pad goes and as well on the front that way we don't get any oil on our pads. So just using some brake cleaner, you can spray around the pad surface here. You want to get all the oil off. We're putting new pads on here like you should when you're doing a brake job so you don't want to saturate those pads with oil um, so when you pick this up try not to put your fingers all over it you can just grab it put the outside flip it back over put it on you do the same thing for this side Now 
now that we have a rotor on, we're basically going to be going in the reverse process of the first half of this video, um, which would be putting the caliper bracket back on and then the hardware brake pads caliper. So on your caliper bracket, you can see the two recessed spots here on your knuckle. Just like you took it off, it's going to go behind right there. Your brake rotor is going to go inside the bracket. You want to make sure your brake rotor is flush. You have these two bolts. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so you can see, but you want to push it up and then get your bolt started. Once you get the bottom one started, then you can kind of rotate to find the top one. So you want to throw those in by hand just to get them started so you know you're not going to cross that them. Grab your socket. And tighten those down. So we have the caliper bracket all tightened up. The, uh, on these bolts when you're installing them I do recommend that you torque them to the specified factory torque settings um, if you don't have a torque wrench just get them nice and tight make sure you're actually cranking down on them these are going to be used to stop your vehicle so you don't want any of the bolts coming loose uh, I still would recommend to torque them so we have those tight now we can move on putting in our hardware so the hardware goes in pretty much just how it came out so the hardware that should be coming with your brake pads are the retainers. Of course, like I said previously, they don't come with new ones, just clean them up, uh, the old ones. But these are new, so they go in basically how they came out. So you have a recess here. You have a recess here, and this part fits right in the recess. The bridge goes over the rotor. So essentially it would go in like that, and you want to just push it on to the seat right there you want to make sure it's nice and seated there's a groove right here that is pushing into the caliper bracket so you go for the top and bottom it's fairly simple if you just pay attention to the way that, the, that you were able to remove them you will be able to install them we have our brake pads now these are new pads they will be sliding into the retainers here. This piece of material that is off the edge is actually made to squeal and make noise. If you've ever heard a light squeal on the brakes because you were maybe needing new brakes, it is positioned right past the base material of the pad so it alarms and lets you know that you are needing new brakes. So you want to put that brake pad with that squealer on it on the back side and then on the front there should be one without a squealer so you'll put it in here what I like to do is start with this ear push it down right at the edge and you're going to rotate the top of it in and push that one in too and you can go ahead and push it all the way up to the rotor so you'll do the same thing with the back remember the squealer goes on the inside pad so start the bottom rotate it up start the top and you just squish those together make sure your rotor is on the back right there on the hub push back squeeze these and now we are ready to compress the caliper because we are putting new pads in they are larger which means that the resting position of the caliper is going to be smaller because the other pads were worn down so what we're going to have to do is use a C-clamp and press the cylinder in the caliper to widen the gap so we can put it on with our new pads. So what you want to do is find your brake reservoir, which is right here. Um, if it is an automatic car, then it's going to be uh, right here is your brake master. You're not going to have a clutch master or anything like that. So you'll have a brake master. It says the dot three has a brake symbol. And what you're going to do is just open the cap visually look in there and make sure that there is room 
normally the level should be at an operating level of right here um, so there should be room for it to to come up inside right now our level is good so we're able to go back down and press that caliper open of course when you're done with the pressing of the caliper on both sides when you finish your brakes you always want to double check anything you've touched so one of those being put the cap back on uh, pump the brakes make sure you have adequate fluid we have the caliper here I've just have it resting up you don't want to disconnect the the brake line to the caliper um, if you do that you will have to re-bleed the caliper and add fluid because um, there'll be air trapped in there fluid will come out so we are going to need it to open this gap because of our new brake pads so we're going to use one of the old pads here we're going to put it on the face so we're not going to damage anything on the face and we are going to take a C clamp and between this bolt here and the used pad of course with the reservoir cap off you're going to try to get it in the center and you're just going to lightly compress this caliper as you can see the rubber right here if any of it is pinched in between where you're pushing and uh, the face of this piston stop immediately because you'll rip that boot and you will have a leaking caliper so we're just going to get it compressed very slowly this is little to no force you can show them right here on turning I'm barely even giving it pressure if it's harder than this then there's something obviously wrong with your setup here but now that we have it compressed take the c-clamp off old brake pad out and we are ready to slide on the caliper so to do so we are going to turn it like this push it right here as you can see sometimes this is just trial and error I didn't compress it enough I went on the side of caution so we're just going to put this back in and we are going to compress it a little bit more and that is fully compressed not absolutely fully but as close as I would like to get with the the boot there should be enough to slide on so now we have ample room to put this on if you get up here and this spring right here these are your bolts for your caliber caliper they slide in here in case your rotor is moving or warped if they get caught you just pull them back by hand and it sits in this recess uh, right there and do the same on the bottom and then we can go ahead and put our bolts in so just like on the caliper bracket you want to just start them by hand once you get them started you want to make sure that this tab is in the flat that's what keeps this from rotating around so we're in the flat there and we're in the flat on the bottom if it's sitting on top it'll either spin catch sit crooked so you just want to make sure that the surface of this is all the way up on the caliper with the notch on the flat so we'll get our socket we'll tighten these up while you're tightening these you want to make sure that of course this nut is not spinning where it should be catching on the flat and staying right there just get that one a little snug then work on the top one after you got them both snug tighten them down We have everything bolted, back together, put on, wiped down, tightened, and we are now ready for the wheel to go back on. 
before you do that, visually look. Of course, if this is your first time doing it, at the very beginning you may want to take pictures around just so you know what it looked like if you're unfamiliar. But just visually look, recheck your bolts for tightness. Uh, look, make sure everything is in and in its position, working fine. The rotor should be able to spin. Um, rudder sitting flat, everything. Something to add that I, I, I said about the, uh, about the rotor, but on your brake pads, you want to make sure the new ones and the old ones are the same. So you want to put them up back to back and face to face, make sure they look the same. Um, of course, you don't want to be putting in a brake pad that is wrong for the vehicle and won't function correctly. So make sure they are the same. If there's any question, if they're not the same, go back to where you bought them, whether that is a parts house or online, and just double check before you continue on. So we are putting the wheel on now. When putting your wheel back on, you wanna make sure that you first start all of your lug nuts by hand. These are lug nuts. Of course, you'll have either a four-way, a socket, whatever you're choosing to take this off, tire iron, and you can push the wheel up, start in this hole, and then you can go adjacent to that one. And basically, you're gonna go in a star pattern. So you'll just start them by hand if you're using an impact or anything like that. You just go ahead and just hit it with the impact without starting it. You can cross side it and you're going to be fighting it and in a bigger, way bigger and time consuming process than just starting them by hand like this. What I like to do because I start them by hand first and don't want to ensure any problems with tightening them down too quick with the impact, cross threading, anything like that, is I take the socket after with a wrench on it and I will just go down in a star pattern and make sure it's snug. Why I go in a star pattern is if you go around, the wheel can be uh, offset on the hub. It can it can be tilted and when you start clamping it you can actually be clamping it with an angle and it not seated properly so what you ensure by doing it in a star pattern across from each other essentially is that the wheel is sitting flat on the on the brake rudder which is attached to the hub and that everything's seated and eccentric with your lug nuts so once this is just hand tight the wheel starts turning I go to the next one, and visually you want to look in here, make sure that it's snug on, that it's touching on all of the surfaces. And of course the wheel is moving, but I am going in a star pattern. So now that all of these are tight by hand, if you were to leave and drive off just like this, these lug nuts will wiggle loose, your wheel will go flying, and um, it'll be a really bad and unsafe situation. So you want to look up the factory torque specs for your lug nuts and go ahead and torque those before uh, you put the car back on the road. So we're going to drop this down. You want it sitting on the ground so the pressure is on the wheel. Um, and go in that star pattern, torque them. I like to torque them twice. Uh, ensuring that I got all of them. Um, I normally do once in a star pattern and then I go back and do the star pattern again. After that's done, you want to pump the brakes, especially since you have compressed the caliper, you want to pump the brakes, make sure that the brakes are working uh, before you drive off. All right, we got the wheel torqued. Uh, this is our brake reservoir. We need to look and make sure after pumping the brakes that the fluid is at the right level, which it is. 
So we're going to put our cap back on. So with our cap back on, we should be good to go. We're going to close the hood. We have successfully replaced the rotor, the brake pads, reinstalled everything, made sure it's tight, torqued it down, and uh, pushed the brake pedal, redid the cap. So at this point, it, it should be roadworthy. Um, of course, I'm not going to show the other side. The other side is basically the same thing, just on the opposite side of the car. Um, so at this point, hopefully this video allowed you to do your brakes on your own and uh, we're able to follow through with the steps. Really appreciate you watching. If you got to this point, I wish you the best of luck on your adventure of doing your own brakes, whether that be on a lift in a shop or outside your garage in the driveway, um, which we've done many times before. Uh, be sure to check out these couple of videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more how-tos and car-related and biking videos that we do on a daily basis. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helped you out.